so how are you guys doing today? Good. Good? Perfect. I'm good. Thank you. So uh, uh, just once again, uh, we have an exam. Um, yeah. Could you guys, could you move to chair? To the, will you, could you sit the chair I use the X? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the, uh, they're over there, yeah. So the, uh, make, oh, really? So the, so make sure you guys have an exam a week from today, okay? So we have an exam a week from today. So uh, we're done up to chapter five on uh, Monday. So we'll do the uh, review session from today and Friday and Monday, okay? All right. So the uh, first one, you can try to do this together. Okay. So you have a methane. And you have uh, some arcane over here. We have uh, another one with a triple bond, arcane. And we have <coughs> cyclo, the arcane over here. Okay. So we have uh, several numbers of choice over here. I want you to choose SP3. Okay. So you have a methane, arcane, 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 cycloarcane. Uh, choose the one that has SP3 hybrid orbitals. Okay. solve the problem together anyway but let's have some time to uh, think about how we're gonna uh, do the problem it's about one minute okay. <clears throat> yeah try to find out the the one that has sp3 hybrid orbitals okay and that's the key <clears throat> <coughs> Alright, so let's do this together here. Um, where are there? So we have this one, this one, this one. Okay? Makes sense, right? So the point is uh, you need to find out the one that has uh, all single bonds, uh, meaning each carbon should have four. Uh, Bondings, if you're all single bonding. Uh, so, because the carbon has four valence electron, so the carbon is group four elements. So, it has four valence electron they can use for the bonding. So, if you think about the single bond, they can only do one pair of electron, so it'd be one, 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 one. So, it can have maximum four uh, single bond, sigma bond over there. Uh, that's why you can do. SP3. So you have a S orbital and P orbital whose electrons will be what? All hybrid in four SP3 hybrid uh, orbitals there. So any carbon that has four bondings, uh, that's the one that you need to find. But uh, if you have a here and here, those are the one that has. SP2. Make sense, right? Because you have a, they save the one on the P for pi bonds. So in these two carbon has the SP2. So they do have a SP3 somewhere, but uh, they do also have SP2, so it's not perfect compound. Same here. This in a triple bond it will be SP, right? So they can leave two on the two pi bonds, so it can triple bond. So they have a sp3, but here sp, uh, so it's not perfect either. Uh, tricky one is this one. So do you think this is a cycloarcane, cyclohexane, but you need to see the implied hydrogen these two. So it'll be all four each. Okay. So the ones that has all sp3 will be those uh, uh, from the carbon. Obviously, not high enough. The car. Make sense, right? Yeah. Can I move on? All right. Okay. <clears throat> uh. 
30 seconds to try. <clears throat> I'll give you 90 degree, 180 degree, 120 degree, or any number you want. Okay, so what's the answer? 109. So, uh, just memorize this number for the exam. Just memorize it. 109.5, just remember that number whenever you walk up in the middle of the morning or something. Just that would be on the exam. Okay? So just remember that number, uh, that will be on the exam. Okay? Uh, it is such important because the if you think about the organic compounds, they're all mainly made of what? Carbon and hydrogen. They'll do a lot of the tetrahedral structure everywhere. Uh, so 109 is very good. Uh, standard number you can start with for measuring the bone angle. Okay? <coughs> All right, so if you have okay. All right, so if you have a, this uh, chemical equation, I just want you to find the conjugate base. So we have a four, and I want you to find the conjugate base out of four. So maybe just on one minute. So let's do this together. So obviously, if you compare these two, um, you can actually see this hydrochloric is, you know, acid for sure. But to make sure, to compare this one to the other. Okay? We we know just in common sense that this is acidic acid. Uh, this will work as base for sure. Uh, but to make sure, you can always look at the other side. Uh, so this is ACL here, but on the other side, the Cl minus, meaning. This now has lost proton when you move to there, right? So this is indeed for sure, not just by our common sense, but as for sure. It's, it lost the, it donated the proton by just moving to the other side. And obviously this one has to have gained the proton, become hydronium cation. So this one is for sure base. Makes sense, right? Okay. So if we if you do that here, um, obviously this is S in one side, and but it lost the proton. But if it's a reversible reactions, uh, will go when they this Cl minus anion to be in the original form. What do you need to do? They need to have proton back, right? Makes sense, right? So then. And the other side, this one is kind of behave like a base now. Because to this one to be in original form, it has to gain the proton back. So when it affected the proton, what's that? It's base, right? Okay. So this is our conjugate base. Okay, so this is the answer. And then this one will be our conjugate. Perfect. Great. Thank you guys. Because this one has to uh, <coughs> lose proton to be in the original form. So hydronium cation will lose proton, obviously become water. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so you can find out which one has donated the protons on the left side, and that would, what? That would be the acid. The other one would be base. But in the other side, they behave in uh, the other ones. So to be for them to be in the original form, that has to be the conjugate base, conjugate acid. So if you look for either conjugate base or S, or they are here, okay? <clears throat> Makes sense, right? 
Do you guys remember this actually? It's, it's, we didn't do this for like two months ago, but I think it's pretty good practice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So on the multiple choice, if I ask you to find the either acid or base or conjugate acid or conjugate base, and you need to know which one you choose. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Okay, so we have uh, another equation over here. <clears throat> okay, so in this <coughs> case, I'm going to give you a number for pKa. For those acid one, acid and conjugate acid. Okay. And I just want you to tell me uh, which direction this elect, uh, equi equilibrium will seek to. Either to the left, to the right, or right to the left. And you can compare it from the numbers in pKa value for acid and conjugate acid. And which way will seek to the equilibrium space. <clears throat> so you need to know what pKa means uh, and what does it tell you about the uh, chemical reactions. Especially when you do acid and base uh, reaction. <clears throat> so it will be a one minute tree. So it's a quite, I think it's quite a uh, straightforward question. Uh, if you just know what pKa is, uh, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> okay, just 30 seconds. <clears throat> so only thing you have to know in the exam is which direction it moves. I seek to the uh, equilibrium, okay. which will be more abundant at the equilibrium. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the uh, this pK is 9.31. This is pK is negative 7 over here, right? So which one is a stronger acid here? Is it acid or conjugate acid? Acid. The, which one? It'll be 1, 2. Which one is 1 or 2? 1. Okay. So the, here's the thing, the, uh, um, so you know Ka, right? Ka, okay, Ka is equal to what? Okay, so uh, if you have a high Ka, means you're going to have a high concentration of protons, okay? Uh, if you look at this, okay, makes sense, right? Because uh, this is the numerators, this denominator. So when those break apart in this form, uh, this will behave like an acid when it donates a lot of protons here. So if it gives us a lot more number of protons, it will be stronger acid. If it doesn't give us much of a proton, it will be considered a weak acid because it doesn't give us much of the uh, protons available in the uh, medium. So then uh, using Ka value over here, uh, you're going to have a higher number in proton concentration that will give us the higher number for Ka. Uh, but the pK is kind of tricky because the p value uh, simply means a negative log of something. So, uh, for example, the pH, you guys remember this? pH, this is a p-value of what? Concentration of proton. So, uh, ironically, if you have a lower number of pH, it's more acidic. Even though you have a, because that means actually a higher concentration of the protons. Uh, same as the pKa. So, if you have a high number of pKa, that's the negative load negative low. So if it's the higher in Ka, it's lower in pK value. You guys remember this, right? Okay. So technically, so I know it's tricky, but the uh, by thinking about that one, that this is the stronger than acid. This is the lower in pK. Actually means higher in Ka, which means stronger acid. Okay. It's been a while I did this, 
So is it going to be move from right to left? Right to left. Perfect. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Was it tricky? So the tricky. lower the number of pK, the stronger the acid Perfect. is? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. But then, then higher the Ka is a stronger acid. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, it's just because the p-value that is negative. Uh, yeah. So if you have a higher number in negative sign, that's the actual lower number. You remember that. Make sense, right? Can I move on? So if I change the uh, number to maybe PK is 1, PK is 10, which direction will go? Left to the right. Perfect. Make sense, right? Uh, this will take some time. Okay. Uh, name this one. Okay. Uh, I think this will give about two or three minutes. Maybe two or three. Yeah. Two or three. <clears throat> Try to think about the locant and prefix, base, and obviously it's a suffix. Uh, but okay, maybe one more minute. Try to find the base first. Uh, suffix is very obvious, right? The whole thing we bond. And you just need to know local and the prefix. important for you to try first even though you're not sure it's okay just try your best and if you uh, compare your answer to mine it will be make more sense as well within this all right so the uh, here's the thing um, if you look at this one here uh, you don't have any double or triple bond there okay so that makes your uh, so once again look on prefix and your base and suffix, okay. The, um, so the suffix will just fix that A and E uh, because you don't have any double or triple bond there, okay. So we put A and E here. And then, uh, first of all, once you're done with the suffix, um, we need to find the longest carbon chain, which will become your base. So it will be, you can do it this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. And then uh, eventually you're going to find the uh, longest carbon chain which is possible in this compound is right here. Okay? So you try to count the carbon inside in the longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay? The seven needs what? Do you guys remember this for base? Heptane. Heptane. Perfect. You guys are doing great. So this is a heptane now. Uh, then you need to know, you need to look at the prefix now. So you have in total one, two, 
three, and four methyl groups. Because uh, there's only one carbon on each. Okay, so you have a uh, four uh, methyl groups to locate now. Uh, to do that, you need to find the uh, where you need to which carbon you need to start number from left to the right or right to the left. What would you do? If you remember the rule uh, we learned uh, like a month ago, you, would you want to count the carbon from left or from the right? Okay. To give a minimal possible number for the local. I'll do from? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So if you count the carbon from here, that will give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, but if you write the carbon from here, there will be 3, 4, and 5, 5 here. So if you're doing this way, you're going to have a 3, 3, 4, and 5. If you do it from here, it will be 3, 4, 5, 5. So obviously, this number combination is lower than this one. Then we're going to choose this one. So this is why you need to count the cover from left to the right not right to the left. There's a two way in your longest carbon chain counting, uh, but we'll choose this way, okay? Because of this. Makes sense, right? Okay. So then it's almost done. You just need to do three comma, three comma, four, five, and four methyl, four methyl. So it will be tetra. Tetra means four. So one is mono, two is di, one is mono, uh, but usually you don't have to do mono, it's okay. But two is di, three is what? Tri, and <coughs> four is tetra, and five is pep pepta hexa, it's actually the same for the base uh, name. But only difference is one, two, three, four, which is mono, di, tri, tetra. Uh, but we have a four method groups here, so it'll be tetra methyl. Pep. Okay. Makes sense, right? Yeah, go ahead. Can you the Oh, this the number. So the um, this is number from your carbon. Um, so this is the your uh, longest carbon chain you can possibly have in this uh, compound. So if you're going this way, this way, this way, it'll be less than seven. So it'll be six, six, four, and four, uh, four here. So this is longest carbon chain. And then to locate your prefix, which is those methyl groups here. So methyl groups, the prefix are the, the RQ group that attach to your base. So those the ones not in the base is the uh, RQ groups. So they're, they're prefix, they, they are prefix. But we have a four same prefix group which is methyl which is one carbon one carbon one carbon one carbon okay um, so you don't see the hydrogen there but you know there's hydrogen so the uh, if you have a four you need to locate them where they are attached to in the base uh, so you need to know where there's location of the four methyl group you need to number the carbon that will know oh there's two two methyl group on the carbon number three, another one and four, another one on five. Uh, so this is why we're putting the local number to look at where they are. Okay. Make sense, right? Okay, let's have. <clears throat> All right, you guys doing great so far. Okay, so if you have a, this compound, that's on out here. Um, what might be the strongest intermolecular force that this compound can experience? Uh, that's the uh, question. So what might be the strongest intermolecular force this compound can experience? Uh, is, the, is the question. <clears throat> So I'll give you about one minute, uh, uh, but 
to answer this question, you need to know what type of intermolecular force uh, we have first. And you need to choose which one will be the best one or strongest one. The, the first question you can have is, is this going to be polar or non-polar? Can you guys guess? Because of this the hydroxy group, this will become polar. Yes. So that's good stuff there. Yeah. That's something you can do, the good stuff. So uh, let's do this together. So uh, if this molecule become polar because of the hydrogen group, uh, it is mainly because of the oxygen. Uh, so if you think about the electronegativity uh, numbers in carbon and hydrogen, they're quite small. It's actually less than 0.4 in piling units. So we call them almost non-polar covalent bonds. So the ones on here should be having any polarity uh, much in this compound, but because of this one, which obviously is quite what electronegative, it's very. If you look at the periodic table, you see the nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine is like in the you know right top corner, except the last column, right, which is noble gas. So except the noble gas, that is the one you can find on the right top corner, which will be most electronegative, uh, we, as we learned in the periodic trend in Jenkins one. So the that makes quite big gap between this oxygen and those uh, carbon and hydrogen in the electronegativity, right? Uh, so that makes quite a good uh, polarity over in this compound here. So that indicates that, oh, this will, should be experienced dipole, dipole interaction. Okay. This is the interaction between polar molecules, okay? So if you have a compound that has quite of a good enough a high enough uh, polarity there, those polar compounds can do dipole dipole interaction because they have uh, some parts that is partially or relatively speaking more negative than the other side of the compound. And those the gap in electronegativity potential ch uh, change or the gap makes some um, quite of a electronical force can be uh, worked on the following the columns law. Okay? So the point is this is polar, so it'll be dipole dipole interaction. Uh, but if you just say that for that interaction, there will be only half right uh, because of the this one. Um, so the you also need to think about the one we talked also. That is the the one 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 of the strongest the strongest uh, that for that interaction is what we call hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bond is the interaction on the uh, either hydrogen to oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen. So this is kind of special because hydrogen is very small. Hydrogen is very small. And then nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, as you know, is very high, highly electronegative. So the gap between these two will be very strong. And this is very small. So interaction between these two attached to each different molecule will be a lot stronger than any other regular dipole dipole interactions. Uh, so we call them specially hydrogen bond. Uh, but the thing is, they also need to attach to the other in covalent bond and also the interaction between the ones in other compounds as well. So this will be a good example of hydrogen bond. Okay. Also, the another good example of hydrogen bond will be water. Okay? This water is also the one that has hydrogen uh, covalently attached to the oxygen that also can interact with other water molecule being hydrogen and oxygen. Okay? So this is the case of this hydrogen. Okay? <coughs> so the, the, in, uh, the strongest intermolecular force it can experience is hydrogen bond. <coughs> Okay, makes sense, right? Can I move on?
All right, what's the next one? Okay. But this is, I think, quick and easy one. Uh, if you have a... If you have a Ka value equal to 3.40 times 10 to the fifth, what is the pKa? That's the question. Uh, I'll give you one or two minutes. Uh, you need to you can you need to use a calculator. Seven times negative two. So this is a Ka value, right? Oh, or fifth, yes. <clears throat> we just talked about this, so you probably know how to do this. Yeah, you can use calculator, uh, but uh, make sure you guys bring your calculator on the exam, but that is uh, very cheap. Don't bring the very expensive calculator, uh, which I will not let you use it. Uh, like meaning, like you know, two hundred, three hundred dollar calculator, right? You have a big monitor. Don't use it. Uh, just use a, like a ten dollar very cheap calculator. It should be enough for this. <clears throat> okay. Just one, uh, one more minute, and we'll do this. <clears throat> So the once again the p simply means negative log of something, which is negative log of k. So I'm gonna put this number in negative log. Uh, you can do it in calculator like this. And then you get what number? Per four point something, right? Yeah. So that's it. So whenever you see the Ka number, to get the number for the pKa, you just need to put the numbers in negative log. And that's it. So that's pretty, uh, I think, step four. Let's move on. OK, so the, So if you guys remember this from the last lecture or the, uh, the YouTube video, um, uh, I probably just told you to just remember the definition. Okay. Uh, so could you guys write the definition of these two? I hope you guys remember this. The I said the I just want you to remember the definition of these two. Uh, we're gonna use this one actually later in this after exam one. So for now, for the exam, you only need to know the definition of those two. Uh, so maybe one minute, you can just go. <coughs> The, uh, yeah. All right, so the, uh, the racemic mixture is what? Could you guys tell me what they are? It's the 50, 50 of what? The RNS. RNS, perfect. Which is your, the enantiomers, right? Because if you have an inversion of the thyroid center, that makes mirror image to each other, right? You guys remember this? Uh, so enantiomers. So if you have a 50%, 50% of enantiomers, the mirror image compounds, half and half. Uh, what happened to this one is the, uh, even though you should polarize the light through this, the racemic mixture, the, the light will not rotate. Uh, because of the, the enantiomers will uh, rotate the polarized light in the same degree, but opposite directions. Uh, so for example, if you have a, like R compound rotating this way, 
And if you have S, I mean, or other uh, mirror image rotate in the same degree, but this way, it still stay the same, right? So even though the two enantiomers have an optical property, but they cancel the each other when it's 50-50. Uh, that's why they will not show you any rotation of the degree of the polarized light when it's racemic mixture. So that's how we define it. Make sense, right? Okay. How about the prochirality? Perfect. So this is the not yet chiral center, chirality center, but it is going to be potentially a chi uh, not a, I'm sorry, the chirality center after one step of chemical step, one single step of chemical reaction. Perfect. That's all you need to know. Okay? So make sure on the exam, if I ask you this, make sure you guys know what they are. Okay? Just you need just need to know what they are. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. The next one. <clears throat> oh, this might be a good one too. I hope you guys remember this. This is also quite a wrong trick. Um, uh, I want you to choose that has C and H2N formula. This is a bit tricky, uh, but I want you to uh, try this one. Uh, okay. So and just choose any compound that has CN, H2N. So technically, you can do it in the hard, hard way, which you just count all the hydrogen and carbon attached to it. Uh, that's okay. But there's an easy way to do it. Uh, so what we're gonna discuss in one minute or two minutes. Okay. <clears throat> so any compound that has C N H two N, uh, that's the one we were looking for. Okay. So the harder way is that you can count all the carbon and hydrogen there, uh, but uh, there's also another easy way to do it. Uh, easier way to do it. Uh, so we can discuss. Okay. <clears throat> Did you guys got it? Okay, just uh, one more minute. <clears throat> okay, so the, uh, could you guys tell me, I'll just number one, two, three, four, five. What are those numbers? This one will be these two, okay? So uh, I'll tell you the easy way first. Uh, whenever you have a compound, if you have any compound that has only one double bond, and all single bond, okay? okay? If that compound is made of only carbon and hydrogen, and that compound has only one double bond, the other ones are all, all single bond. It's obviously uh, CN and uh, H2N. Uh, because the if you have a CN H2N plus, this is the arcane, meaning they all made in single bond. But if you, there's one double bond, they will lose two hydrogen to make double bond. Uh, so that makes CN to H2N. Okay. So the compound that has the one double bond and all single bond, that is the C and H2N. Uh, but obviously you can double check <clears throat> by just counting. So there will be three hydrogen here, right? This is terminal carbon. The carbon should have a four bond. This is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, okay? So it has a three and three hydrogen here. But this carbon has the double bonds to be one, two, three, four. So there'll be only one hydrogen for each. So that makes the Three, four, five, eight. So that makes the four carbon and eight hydrogen. So that is for sure uh, C and H two N for sure. Makes sense, right? You can double check. Uh, but what about this one here? 
because the, there's all single bond, but it's also CnH2n. Can you guys guess why? <coughs> huh? Perfect. That is perfect answer. That's very good. Because the, this is all linear, but it has a ring structure, meaning there are no terminal carbons there, right? It's all linked together. That's why at these two, if they were linked in these two terminal carbon, they should lose one pair of electrons, oh, I'm sorry, the hydrogen. So that also makes this one, okay? So in case you have uh, one double bond in the cycloalkene, there will be Cn, H, H2n minus two. So, but now it's just Cn, H2. Make sense, right? Okay, perfect, you guys are doing great so far. But once again, if you are just double check, you wanna do proof reading, you can also count the hydrogen, that's okay. Uh, you can double check always just putting the hydrogen there. And then, uh, so you guys wanna do one more? Okay, so don't worry about it. Uh, we'll do another review session on Friday and Monday too. Uh, so we have enough time still. Okay? So we're doing great so far. This will be a good reminder that we learned a couple, or a month ago. <clears throat> Just one more and we'll finish it. <clears throat> okay, so the, uh, if you have uh, okay, uh, you just need to find the uh, one atom that has formal charge. So I didn't put any formal charge in this molecule here, but if it does, find the which atom will have that formal charge. Okay. Just looking at this one. That will, uh, yeah. So I'll give you about one or two minutes. <coughs> Okay, 30 seconds. <clears throat> okay, so the uh, let's do this together. Um, oh, I'll do this. So the uh, if you look at this one over here, it has one, which is a hydrogen group one. So this is okay. Carbon here, one, two, three, and four. This is group four. That's okay. Um, sorry for this one, I didn't, but I hope you guys already did this, but one, two, three, four, five, six, but this is group six, oxygen is group six, so it's okay. One, one, that's okay. One, two, three, four, this is group four, that's okay. Okay, this is also group one, so it's okay. This one has one, two, three, four, but nitrogen is group five, perfect. So this one will have positive charge. There you go. So you find the answer that is nitrogen. Okay. All right, I'll finish here today. Okay, I will do